Welcome to our review on the identification of plant diseases. So the first thing we're going to look at is how we can actually identify these plant diseases in the context of being out in the field. And there are two key techniques that we can use to diagnose these plant diseases. First one is observation and the second is microscopy. If we consider observation first of all, this is where we're looking for visual symptoms of those plant diseases. So we might be looking for the discoloured leaves as we can see on the left there in our strawberry plant. It might be that parts of the plant have begun to rot as we can see on that middle picture. It could be that we're getting those very noticeable deposits like with the powdery mildew on the right. So when we're talking about observation, we're looking at anything that we can see that's a clear indicator of something not being right with the plant. The second option we've got available to us in the field is light microscopy to identify the pathogen. Now, in most cases, the light microscope is sufficient, but sometimes to provide an accurate diagnosis of which pathogen we've got, we may need to step it up to use the electron microscope, which obviously isn't something you can do out in a field because as we looked at back in B1, light microscopes are brilliant and portable, electron microscopes, not so much. So the big downside about both of these techniques for identifying plant diseases out in the field is that they can only be identified once those symptoms are apparent, which tells us that at that point the infection has already taken hold. So this isn't a case of we can preempt the infection. We have to wait until the symptoms of the infection actually show for us to identify what the problem actually is. The alternative to identification in the field is using a laboratory. And there are two key lab techniques that we can use to identify the pathogen that's causing the problem. First one, DNA analysis. Secondly, antigen identification. If we consider the DNA analysis first of all, all living things have a unique genome and that includes our plant pathogens. So this means they have a unique set of DNA. Now, what we can do is we can use a process called DNA fingerprinting to then identify what pathogen we've got based on the DNA present. In the middle, you've got the actual diagram showing you the results of this DNA analysis. So we've got two known viruses on each side, tomato mosaic virus on the left and cucumber mosaic virus on the right. In the middle, we've got our unknown pathogen. Now, in order to work out what the unknown pathogen is, we're basically carrying out a spot the difference exercise. We want to actually match all of the bands to one of the viruses we know. Whichever one it matches, that's our pathogen. So if we start at the bottom, they all match for the first two, but as soon as we get to that third band up, you can see it matches the cucumber mosaic virus, but not the tomato mosaic virus. So we can say our unknown pathogen then is the cucumber mosaic virus because all of those bands match up with the actual specimen. The second lab test that we could do is an antigen identification. Now, hopefully we remember that antigens are the protein spikes on the surface of a microorganism and specific pathogens have specific antigens. So what we can actually do is identify the pathogen by identifying those antigens using a chemical analysis. Now, the big advantage about both of these lab tests in terms of identifying a pathogen is that they allow for our identification before significant damage has been created. We're not having to wait until our crop is showing all those signs and symptoms to be able to say, oh, look, it's got these discolored leaves and these deposits, therefore it is plant pathogen X. We can literally take the sample run it through before we're seeing that many signs and symptoms at all, and then we can take remedial action before too much damage is done. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now describe how plant diseases can be detected when out in the field, and you can describe how we can identify plant diseases in a laboratory setting.